All right, cool. So we're back. Um, <laughs> I guess like an intro, an intro or like a little clip we probably may or may not rolled out. I had auto issues in the middle of recording this, but I finally got you guys and I fixed it. My name is Vance. This is DI Radio. This is a talk show where I literally, I, I literally don't want to repeat the whole script thing. But yes, I have interviewed some pretty cool people in the Smash community, and honestly, these are some two cool people who I didn't know who was a duo. Uh, of course, for those of you guys who may know them, this is Smith Space. Hey guys, how are you guys doing today? Hey, hey. what's up? Good. I know this is the third time you ask the question. For <laughs> <laughs> for, nah, we, we, thanks for thanks for having us. It's, again, it's an honor. Nah, dude. It's, it's great to it's a great to see you guys because, like I said, a little bit like pre-show. Usually by this time, I would have seen you guys at least twice, three times, right? Like at a random TGG event for sure, at Evo, yeah. and then at maybe if I went to like SmashCon or something else. Um, so it's good to see that you guys are doing good. And shout outs to your dog or cat. I'm pretty sure it's a dog. It's a dog. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, it's adorable. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous of everybody because everybody's getting a cat or some sort of pet in the middle yeah. of quarantine. And I'm like, I had a life situation where I'm like, oh, I'm going to need to take in family members. And yeah. um, my grandparents are allergic to cats. So, like, I was oh. like, great, there goes my plan. So, yeah. <laughs> enough about me. I, I, know, I know who you guys are. And for anybody, which may or may not surprise me, uh, who doesn't know who you guys are, go ahead and give me your elevator pitch. Okay. Um, I would say Spiff is, uh, we kind of brand ourselves like a youth culture centered uh, brand. Um, we focus mostly on like Smash and we've totally gotten more into like anime community, but uh, how about my froze up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like we don't really brand ourselves as like strictly a streetwear brand. We like to call ourselves more of a lifestyle brand because mm. if you follow us on any type of like social media, the stories that we post or a lot of the things that we post about on Twitter revolve around like video games and like what we like to do, art and like traveling and food and stuff like that. So it's not just like streetwear. And as far as like the products that we make as well, it's not just clothing we try to branch out into like recently dropped like a limited edition like jigsaw puzzle just because we wanted to yeah. you know so um yeah we're more of like a lifestyle brand so if you kind of vibe with like the stuff that we're into then you might vibe with like the products that we make too so yeah i think that's the one thing i've always and we're gonna get a little bit into you guys history but like mm -hmm. that's the one thing i guess i've always appreciated about seeing you guys but also the the brand Smith Space is when I first I wouldn't say met you guys but when I first heard of you guys it was at like I may or may not be wrong on this it might have been either Abadongo Saga or one of the sagas happened and I remember somebody you the first drop it might have been like the first drop or the first set of clothing you guys had where it was all like brands or basketball brands but it wasn't the style of the Smash characters yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the number one thing that everybody was like and their mother was buying was like the hoodie. It was like the hoodie because you can wear the tag and you can have it on the sleeve. And I was like, that's really sick. That's like almost having your own jersey, so to speak, right? Except it's on a hoodie and you can take it off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely our most popular item. Yeah. For a while. I mean, honestly, probably like throughout the entire history of whenever we've been a thing, that's mm -hmm. probably still our number one. Selling item, huh? Well, Overall, yeah. people love the individuality and they love mm -hmm. being able to like express themselves, um, especially in a scene like that where so many people are already friends or they're competitors. Uh, and it's just a way to like quickly identify yourself from the crowd. Yeah, I think it kind of uh, it kind of changed the game, so to speak, um, <clears throat> in terms of whenever you're going to in person events, nothing like that had been offered before. So, like, now you're going to an event and maybe someone that you had just known online for a long time, you see them and you see their tag on their hoodie and you know it's them or whatever. So I think it, yeah, it really kind of helped uh, with that live aspect of, like, Smash events. You know? Right, right, right. So it's kind of cool. And I would, I would agree that, not just that, but the actual, like, transaction and sitting there and talking to a customer throughout the whole process of making the hoodie, like, they're... <laughs> Not just buying it because it's going to be them, but it's a, uh, like an artifact of that moment of that event. It's like, oh, I remember the first time I got my Smash hoodie. I remember having these mains, 
like it just encapsulates the entire event and experience yeah. and a product yeah. that they can then take with them forever. Yeah, yeah. kind of like a little time capsule. Yeah. That's that's what that's what I liked about like that idea. It was really unique. Like you guys said, I don't want to repeat basically what you guys said because it's pretty mm-hmm. on the money about that. But I thought that was the most unique article of clothing. I'm I'm not like a. I actually tell people and you and you you know me, Spiff. I. Mm. For those of you guys who don't know, his name is Alex, but I just know I'm just going to call you Spiffer Alex. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, me. we never introduced ourselves. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, that's, yeah. Uh, I'm Oz. Uh, he's Spiff. I'm Space. Yeah. Oh, that's Alex, perfect. Uh, okay, we'll get we'll, yeah, get, we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get into that. We'll get into that for sure. Yeah, we'll get into that for sure. Um, but, like, you, you you know me, Alex. Like, some of my some of my friends in the Smash community, and even just friends in general, because we've known each other for a while, they're way more fashionable sense than I am. I actually tell people my fashion sense is, oh, hey, stop. Is no. as long I actually just tell people, look, as long as it doesn't look like I, I my mom dressed me this morning and I at mm-hmm. least am color courting, then I'm okay. But like I have Edmund coming over here like with every other outfit like every day, and then I have right, strides. Not, and I have I, I have strides. No like, one could ever compare themselves. <laughs> I have that. strides like wearing like a, like a cardigan <laughs> with like a, like a shirt combo, and I'm just like, all right, I get it. I don't know how to dress, guys. Maybe I should have gone like Zara instead of H and M for once. Nah, you're good, bro. You're good. I love H&M. Yeah, I do not. I love, it's, like it's like my go-to place. I actually tell people it's the, the main place I shop for my clothes if it's yeah. not like an artist. Um, but let's let's dial it back. I kind of want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the origins of Space Space. Uh, coincidentally, Ale- Alex and Oz in this case. But I also wanted to talk about the origins of you guys growing up and how you guys got here. I, like you know, I the question that I ask everybody is like you know who bought you the Game Boy that started it all? Because uh, mm-hmm. if for, most of us are pretty much you know in our twenties or almost thirties, so I know a lot of the Zoomer kids are like, "What's a Game Boy?" I was like, "Well, it was a little square device that back then we all used to play on." But I'm curious for and, and now that I have two of you guys, I don't know who I want to answer yeah. first. Man, I feel like you have a more storied history with video games, so I'm going to let you go I mean, first. my earliest memories are just sitting in my living room playing Super Mario World and the Super Nintendo. And that, like, ever since I can remember, that's always how I kind of, like, that was my, my relaxation, my entertainment, uh, more so than, like, movies, books, TV. Like, I was always just at home sitting there platforming something. Um, my first Game Boy, I remember, it came from my uncle, and I think we were Christmas in whatever that was, 93, 94, and we were at his house in Colorado. And I still remember, like, the smell of opening up the Game Boy, like, package, and, like, the just the OEM smell of, like, anything Nintendo. Uh, but that was, but, like, that's always just been my love. Like, uh, engagement, like, gameplay, um, something about it, something about, like, vibing with, like, the developers and creators and, and knowing what traps they set up for you, and then, like, Getting around it, avoiding it, you know, it's just being in that same space with them. Yeah. Tell them about where you work now. Oh, I was going to get to that. It's your turn uh, first. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let, let, let's go, Alex. You tell me. You okay. tell me. All right. Um, so my history with video games is it's a lot different, I think, from most people because I actually didn't really play a lot of video games growing up. My parents never – I didn't have, like, an uncle who was into it or a dad who was, like, into it. So no one really, like – showed me that until like I, w- I went to school right and um i was always jealous of the other kids who had like game boys or in 64s or whatever and i would like go to their house and play at like birthday party but i didn't really have a system at home until like i was able to buy one myself and so the first system i had was the in 64 right and i didn't have a lot of games for it either because any games that i wanted to buy for it, i would have to like put my allowance or whatever so, um, just to add to that, I had a little bit of different approach. Mm-hmm. Um, instead of playing a lot of games growing up, I would literally go to like Barnes and Noble and just like read like game guides and like <laughs> I like draw pictures from like game guides or like pictures I found online. And so, like, I drew a lot of video game characters, but like, yeah, my first system was the N64 and um, subsequently the Game Boy Pocket. And so, um, the first game I played, I think, was, like, Mario Kart 64 at... You remember Grant's? Yeah. Next call. Damn, you, yeah, guys, you yeah. guys go... This lets me know you guys go way back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go way back. We go way back. Um, <laughs> I would ride my bike to his house and play Mario Kart 64. Um, and at my house, I would have, like... My first game was Pokemon, the blue version. So... Yeah, that's kind of that was my childhood with games. It was kind of more, less 
video games and more like drawing video game characters that I like mm. found. And so, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> okay. So moving forward a bit. Yeah. Uh, then wait, let me just add to that really quick. For those of you guys who don't know, like I, I'm, I'm with you. I grew up with the 64. That was, my uncle was the one who was the gamer in the family. I've already mm. talked about that in the episode with Biggie Kid. You guys can go check it out. But um, back in the day, game, getting games was so expensive. So the only person who ever got games was my uncle because he's the only one who had a job and was yeah. going to college at the time. But I remember games were so expensive. Like, it was a cartridge. You guys have probably have all seen a video of it. It was a big mm-hmm. cartridge. And they were $80. Like, if you guys think 60 bucks for a video game, soon to be 70 mm-hmm. if you guys really care. Um, if you, Yeah, 80, 80 to $90 was, like, the price of a video game back in the day. So I remember, like, I would never buy video games. I just rented them, like, from Blockbuster. And I was like you, Alex. I, yeah, I didn't yeah, have true. a lot of money. I, like, I would go to Barnes & Nobles, and I was actually be, being the one in the the manga section. They had, like, a very small section, because now it's bigger, obviously. Like Right, yeah. But it has, like, a very small niche section. And right next to there, I remember the first one... I was, like, the first person to, like, spot, like, a Legend of Zelda, like, I think it was, like, a manga or something, and it was, like, a book, and I would just, like, buy that so I could draw over it and, like, pretend other things like that. Yeah, so I, yeah, for sure. So I totally experienced that. Let, let me let me go back to you, Asa. So yeah, moving forward. Uh, so, yeah, um, it's been uh, about 10 years and six months that I have worked at a retro video game store here in Houston. Um, so it's a mom and pop shop and I started back in high school, but I remember the first day I walked in, it was like their third day they were open and the walls were still like very bare because they had the inventory of the owner that he'd been collecting for like maybe two or three months. And then like, okay, this is enough. I'll put it out. I remember just walking in and I was like still in love with the place. I was like, holy crap. I was like, I haven't seen Super Nintendo stuff in like 15 years. Cause at this point, this was 2010. Funko Land was gone. Um, games was gone. I think we only had GameStop, and we had um, like Games Plus was one of the few like retro kind of areas. Yeah, the Blockbuster Hollywood Video were out. All that was just gone. Yeah. Gone. So seeing older like retro merch materials, um, besides like Goodwills, pawn shops, garage sales, you know, there wasn't a place for it. At least here in Houston, I don't know how it is. There's still a lot of good shops kind of all over the country. Yeah, we, um, we had, like, one EB Games here in SoCal. I only remember it. And then it changed to a GameStop because it's the same company. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was just EB Games in Camden. Um, <laughs> but, like, so for the past 10 years, that is basically, like, I've been manager there. And I've slowly, like, seen that place grow until we're, like, one of the main spots in Texas even. Like, I've had people come from, like, Rocheron or, like, Austin and Dallas for, like, Neo Geo stuff because nobody else in Texas is Neo Geo stuff. I'm like, tight, all right, we got this. Just tell me what place. Uh, oh, it's called Player it's One Video Games. Uh, oh, okay. I should plug it. Right. <laughs> yeah, Player, player One Video Games. That's a, that's a good I'm name. A top that's top a good top. name. Um, and even now, we like we sell arcades, so we make arcades custom for people. Yeah. Oh, that's. Yeah. So like it like we covered the entire spectrum. Like we got stuff from we have an original not Pong machine, but the original like kind of Pong setups. Yeah. We got Atari's, uh, Fairfax or Magnavox. We have Magnavox Odyssey's, Fairchild Channel Apps. Uh, like from the very get go and beginning of video games. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's super cool. Super yeah, it's, it's very like historical. Like it feels mm-hmm. like a museum. Um, and I love being because I get to interact with all kinds of people that are just there about video games. Or like I said, a seven year old coming once and his head just like was <laughs> amazed because he saw the original Magnavox Odyssey. He's like, oh my, like I didn't know that was like real. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, bro. I was like, look, if you want to try it out, like I got one here. Um, that's, that's and it's just cool. nice, yeah. Like being able to like shepherd newer generation gamers who have an appreciation all over the spectrum of like not just new stuff and not just like the new shooters and battle arenas, but like, they appreciate the origins of like computing and just yeah. one blip on a screen versus another blip. And yeah, and that's that's the basics of it, the origins of games. Yeah, yeah. here in here so. in here in SoCal, like I guess I'll give a really good shout out to them because that was like a venue that I went to for a while. We have um, World 8. That's like our, like, I would say it's, yeah, it's a pretty good one. Uh, It's like the standard, like, I would say, I wouldn't, I like, I apologize to anybody if I don't know your mom and pop shop in SoCal. Like I said, I'm, I live my own life. I'm very busy. It's just the one that I've seen a lot is World 8. They've like, I would say like, they're like the last mom and pop shop of video games that I've seen in SoCal that's still big enough, that's active. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
going into there and seeing like all the like old Nintendo stuff and then being able to reminisce and still have like that really close and personal like like you said, right, a seven-year-old walk into the business and you can like, like, hey, this is what games were like way back before you could put, turn on your PS4, right? Yeah. And then f it's the same thing that people could do at World 8. It kind of like, they host an event there, a Smash event there, and also like other locals. So it's really good to see like the community, the, the general fighting game community like just comes in there, it gets the experience of the venue, but also like you can see they really care about their customer base, as I'm pretty sure as much as you guys do, and it like creates this really nice balance of that something that you don't really see too much in the GameStop you know I don't really have that ex I don't go to a GameStop anymore but I'll go to World 8 that's the funny thing about it yeah yeah. GameStop's and it's not necessarily their fault but they're just corporate yeah and like yeah. in my shop we don't care <laughs> we don't like any <laughs> we just like we'll watch yeah. movies or play Spotify and like we'll just like it's our own little chill spot mm -hmm. people can really like just engage with them personally not they won't be upsold on a game or system. Exactly. Like, hey, like, or a service. Like, what you want, what you need. All right, I got you. Yeah. So let's go a little bit more into you guys. Now, I'm curious. What, how did you two meet? Because now I'm, I also have the two of you guys, so this is going to come into the, the central question. How did you two meet? And when did you guys start becoming, well, no, no pun intended or anything. Like, when did you guys start becoming Space? How, how did that, how did, how did you guys meet? Let's, the, the, the origin story, so to speak. Um, okay, yeah, we've known each other, it was Alpha, right? I don't know if it was first grade. I Do you got that. into Alpha in first grade? No, nah, I feel like I got in. Uh, I feel like I took the test in kindergarten. Okay. As a first grade, I would have been part of it. Okay, well, either kindergarten or first grade is okay. whenever we actually met. Um, we were, uh, what was called an Alpha program mm -hmm. in elementary school where you could, like, test it was like gift in town like yeah. gt essentially and so they had it for elementary school students whenever um they they thought that kids were different or but yeah like they thought right, they could whatever. they could be given a harder test and like at least kind of learn more i don't know they would just split us off from the rest of yeah the pack. so um, at least like once a week uh all the alpha kids would like meet up in a separate <laughs> classroom and like learn about different stuff it wasn't yeah. a lot of kids either it was like this, five of us. yeah it was this, like five kids this sounds like like the next like like a, i don't know <laughs> this okay. sounds really sus yeah it sounds like you're like an academy or like yeah we're taking the smartest kids and they're the alphas it's like okay calm down like yeah yeah yeah. i, I don't know if there's a corollary to that in other schools and school systems mm, but here in um, socal we had the in well when i went when i was in high school we had the mm. element. We had the the magnet, and then the zoo magnet, and then we had what was called um, the HGS, like the highly gifted society. So that was like okay, it yeah, was kind of like that, yeah. Similar, yeah, for sure. So basically, a program like that. But that's where we met, and that was like kindergarten or first grade. And, and then for the next like five up to fifth grade, we still had that same weekly schedule, didn't we? Right. Yeah, because uh, we were in the alpha program for like all five years of elementary school. Um, we had an actual class together in third grade. I think that's whenever we really became friends, though. Miss Wright's class it was right, huh? Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, so that's so that's that goes to how far back we have known each other. Yeah. You know. Um, but in terms of like Spiff, we actually kind of drifted apart during like middle school, high school, mm -hmm. and then we kind of reconnected whenever. The video game shop that he was just talking about i walked into that video game shop and then we were like oh hey it's you and then we started kind of like here i'll linking up over. again uh yeah. so i worked there and i remember you were i think you went to the next door to get food and you're mm -hmm. like well i'm away from my order and he stopped in i was like oh hell it's alex i haven't seen this fool in forever mm -hmm. and i've always known alex to be like extremely creative and artistically talented like even from back in first grade second grade. uh and at the same time, there was a competing retro video game store, uh, kind of, I think at that point they were in town and mm. they had an art section and I was like, mm. we don't have an art section. I want an art section. <laughs> and I was like, I know we got everything else. I know we're cool, but, yeah. and I was like, oh no, hold on. Oh. Hold on. You guys might uh -huh. have to backtrack a bit cause you guys got off a little bit. Okay. okay. So, uh, what I, our art what section, I you, you, you were about to explain like you, him talking to okay. Alex about art section. Yeah. So, so I knew this competing video game store had an art section, and I was like, I want an art section. So I was like, Alex, oh boy, hey, howdy, here you are. I was like, 
and we haven't talked in a while. You know, we just kind of talked a little bit. Yeah. And I reached out, like, hey, if, like, I asked you or commissioned you to do some art for the place, would you mind? And I was like, oh, yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, um, and for me, at the time, I had kind of just graduated college. And either that or, no, I was still, I was finishing up college. Yeah. And I wasn't working because I had quit my other jobs. And I was like, okay, this sounds like a good way to make, like, a little bit of extra money and just get, like, my artwork shown off. So the deal that we worked out is that since I didn't really have money, he would front the cost of, like, all the art supply, canvases, paper, brushes, whatever I needed. And then I would paint stuff, put it in the video game store for free, and then I would just get paid if any of them ever sold. Um, Which I had no idea if they would or wouldn't. Um, But (laughs) They didn't really. (laughs) Yeah, some of them sat for like a long time. (laughs) Uh, Do you want to talk about the original set that you did? Uh, Do you you guys have any of that or like any? Well, it's all paintings, right? Yeah. Fresh in my memory. Uh, just earth balance set. That was the first uh, one, wasn't it? Or did you do ooh, watercolors? You did, like Pokemon watercolors. You started with watercolors. Stuff. Yeah, maybe so. Because I remember we used to we used to go to I think it was Hobby Lobby to get a forty percent off coupon. Yoshi one. Uh, Is the acrylic one? The teenage turtle one. Oh, that's right. Uh, that was one of the first ones. We technically do have some art of that. All <laughs> the other original watercolors and acrylic pieces, um, those sold and. Yeah, they eventually sold. So we, um, if you if you know our enamel pins for Earthbound, those that are like this started as two by three, just monolithic paintings, and we had all four of them picked out in the back corner of the shop. Yeah, oh. we'll I'll have to find a picture and send that to you. I should have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But like literally, one dude bought three of them. Three of them, <laughs> <laughs> and they were expensive too. They were like we sold them for like two hundred bucks each or something like that. I mean, it's kind of low balling at this point, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and then one person bought the the next one. One one of our friends was a huge Earthbound fan, and he bought a game and bought a strategy guide, and I think he bought a soundtrack, and he loved like all of it. He wanted to buy all of them. I don't know if he bought one first. If I think he bought one, and then somebody was like, "Oh crap, I can't let this go away," and he bought the rest of them. Uh, <laughs> oh man, he was. And yeah. so he's just got. I think he just has Jeff in his house. That's funny. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and like those things sat there for like at least a year, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, but like to me, it didn't matter. I it wasn't yeah, there to make yeah, money. Yeah. I just, just wanted something that was like ours. Yeah, just having them in the shop was like really cool. Uh, so, sorry, so we got a little. No, 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 it's all good. That's all uh, good. That is kind of how he and I reconnected, and uh, I actually worked at that video game shop for a short time, and. So how Spiff got started was, I, I guess you could call that kind of like the origins, right? Uh, this was, but this was before we kind of like formally agreed to like start a brand or anything. It yeah. wasn't until like the time Smash Four was coming out, um, mm-hmm. and like all the hype surrounding that, um, and we were both working at the video game shop at the time, and and you know, like that energy around the time when Smash Four came out was just like super super cool and we hosted our we started hosting our own tournaments um at a local coffee shop like just down, down, down the, the street. street yeah and it was for it was like casual you know we weren't super into the competitive scene at the time or very knowledgeable about it at all so we were hosting like imagine if like gamestop hosts like a smash tournament it's like gotcha casual. gotcha it's yeah. not like 2gg or anything Moms like and dads that show up exactly <laughs> so we're hosting tournaments for like eight to ten year olds yeah. like their moms and dads just like local families kids, yeah. like that kind of super casual type thing um uh so yeah around that time smash 4 was coming out we're hosting tournaments and all this and we like as prizes we weren't doing like cash payouts to people what we were doing is we were hosting tournaments and we were giving away like merch that we made or artwork that we made as prizes and that was kind of our way to kind of get our name out there you know because we would get like we would have to cap at like uh 50 60 people a tournament because they there's a good turnout around that time Mm -hmm. um for the limited resources that we had yeah but we had a lot of friends and we we advertised like the local community colleges too so we had a decent like spread and uh and even the high school right there as well had like a video game program. So 
like there was a lot of interest kind of just generally in the area and it wasn't hard to get but mm -hmm. yeah like 50 60 like we would get a lot of people entrance and some of them were just friends and they weren't there like really winning compete but they're like all right this is a night out this is cool yeah um, there's prizes and then we did some pr we would do this like once a season yeah and so that was kind of the first way that we we kind of put our merch out into the world is like uh we had like only four shirt designs to start with and then we would just give them out as prizes at the end um at the same time we were selling these shirts at the shop but they just weren't selling yeah yeah yeah. Okay. We, we were selling them at player one video games but like nobody knew about it at yeah. all it was so, like okay who's this brand i guess yeah. it's, they put little funny jokes on the tags okay yeah. but it was, like, <laughs> it, it was like too niche it was too weird and so hosting giving ourselves our own space where the jokes made sense, the designs made sense. Yeah. Because um, they were like those parody ones. You walk into a regular video game shop and you're like, okay, I got to really like Legend of Zelda to get this, I guess. But here, it's like, okay, there's like four different Link mains. So, okay, that's that's the shirt I want. Yeah, so we kind of got our name out within our really, really small local Smash community. And one time, oh, we hosted awesome. a tournament and like... PR Houston players came in, and this is the same tournament we're having like eight year olds and 10 year olds at, right? And we had no idea who these people were, right? So we obviously seeded the bracket horribly. Um, so we have like this 27 year old guy, like he decked out, like in oh, yeah. goth makeup. He didn't look like a kid. <laughs> Death, like. He had a jacket that said Jesus is a cunt, mm. like on the back of it. We're just like, what the hell is Who going is this on? Dude? And he's like wrecking like eight, these eight year olds. And oh my God, it was horrible. But by the end of the night, I mean, we were cool well, with them. You know what was actually weird though is that because even though we had all those different types of people there, everyone got along. And I was just like, this is cool. Everyone literally just here because they love Smash. Yeah, yeah. that's right? that's the true beauty um, of the community I tell people is like, I, I talked about it, like, a few times before, but, like, the real beauty of the Smash community is you have people from different strokes of life. Like you said, some dude in, like, I, I guess to call, not calling him out, but, like, a really cool homie, like, a really cool person I like to talk to is Metal Riff. He'll, you'll see him. He's got, he's got, not necessarily, he's got this jacket, right? He's got, like, this, this style to himself, right? The metal style that he goes on with. And right. then you have, like, Edmund, who's, like, you know, this, this super cool dude. Super, super yeah, exactly, like. He, he, yeah, he plays Smash, but he's, like, super fashionable. And then you mm. have, like, Javi, who takes photos, really normal guy. But we all talk and we hang out. And we're all, mm. like, we're all different races. We're all different, like, mix. You know, Edmund could, could have Mexican descent. I could have Dominican descent. And then Javi could just be, you know, American. And it's, that's kind of, like, the, I actually tell people the beauty of the Smash community is we're all For from sure. different strokes of life. We all just get along. But go on. Yeah. Go on. And I think that tournament was kind of like one of those moments that made me realize those same sentiments that you're touching on. Um, because we had all these people coming from all over, people who sucked at the game. We had people enter the tournament who had never even touched the game before. They just yeah. wanted to play. We had other people who are obviously like super, super good. But it's like they all got along. And I thought that was like super, super cool. There, because there wasn't like any malice of being beaten about it. It's like, oh, dang, show me what you got. You know, like, yeah. hey, that, that's some technique I've never seen. Yeah, before. there are people who are like, I never knew you could even be that good at that game. You yeah. know, and so it impressed. it was cool. And that's kind of like that was our first introduction into like, there's a really really competitive side to Smash. Yeah. Right. And I so around that time, I know me after that, I watched like the Smash documentary. Um, and learned more about it. Um, and at, simultaneously, we were going to, we sought out the more competitive events in Houston that were hosted by legit organizations. Um, and so then we, that's whenever we decided we were gonna take some of our merch and see if it would be a good fit at like some of these other bigger events. Um, the ones that I went to most notably in Texas were uh, TGC. Yeah. Uh, at the time, that was like the biggest one in Texas. Um, you know, like that's whenever I met like ESAM and MVD and DeBuzz. They would we would fly out all of these players, and a lot of those like some of those tournaments didn't even get streamed. So it was really interesting. But um, yeah, we would set up a booth there. And... Is that is that the one I remember where the lights didn't work? Yeah. Okay. So there was, I believe it's. 
TGC six. Okay. Uh, and this is like a, anybody who went, it, they'll remember this tournament. Um, we right. went and we set up a booth. This was the first time we ever ever did smash hoodies, right? Oh, so the, these, these expect- are. These are the hoodies, the ones you, you know what, the name and everything, right? Right, yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. But this was, like, the first version of them, like, trial run. Um, and we went there. They didn't even have, like, enough tables for us to set up. So we were, heat, like, doing our heat press thing, like, on, on the, floor. the floor, right? They The lights were out, and the only light that worked was next to the bathroom. Yeah, the venue, the venue that they booked was was not capable of handling how much electricity that they were using for all their setups. So like half like no, like he was saying the majority of all the lights were out yeah. except for the ones by the bathroom, which luckily that's where they put that's, us. Yeah. Um because all the bar lights were out. I think I don't know if the stage had lights. Yeah. Like, that's that that's was so about s- it. that's so smart. So if you have to go to the restroom, you run into a booth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> work out, work yeah. Out. But yeah, that that tournament was, to my knowledge, one of the f- first tournaments where anybody was vending ever. Yeah. So people would stop by and be like, what the hell is going on here? Like, are they selling, what are they selling? You know? And we had a couple of those, like, parody sports teams t-shirts, but this was the first time, like I said, that we were doing the Smash hoodies. And, we were oh making my God. Those on site. Were we making the other shirts on site, too? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but none of them was weedy. Yes, we. Yeah. There was a lot of prep work that we just didn't realize we had to do. Yeah, we were still learning the ropes, and we did not expect the volume of people who wanted to buy stuff, and how willing they were to buy like the hoodies and stuff. We were ex- expecting to sell like maybe like five. You know, we were expecting to go out there, sell like five, make like two hundred bucks, and like call it a day. You know, but like we were there literally from like eleven a.m. to like. 2 to 3 a.m., like, nonstop, just, like, working. And we were just like, oh, my God, right? And the other notoriously crazy thing about this tournament is that it ran so long um, that Top 8 had to split, like, the prize money. They didn't finish Like, they didn't even finish that tournament. Um, So, yeah, you can ask, like, Esam about (laughs) about this tournament. (laughs) He remembers. Um, All right. For reference, weeding is whenever you have a design and you are slowly like getting it prepped to print on something else. So like you have to remove this. We just had full sheets of all of our designs. Yeah, and that we were had to, cut, but we had to like. And they weren't organized either. So we had to go and we had to remember where we had put them in relation to other characters and then yeah. cut them out individually. Uh, and peel them out in the dark. God. Like now, now a hoodie might take us like five minutes. Yeah, but yeah. then a hoodie took us like twenty to thirty minutes. Yeah, it was a struggle. Communicating like, across each other, not knowing what we were doing yet, taking orders without a system as well. Mm. Uh, that was a nightmare, but I loved it. Yeah, so that was our first, I think, super memorable. We didn't stay, did we? We ended up leaving. Yeah, we ended up leaving because I think we actually like ran out of hoodies. Oh yeah, that's true. We ran out of hoodies. And, um, yeah, we left shortly before they and split they top eight. Yeah. yeah, we didn't know. We thought they was going to go for another, like, but we stayed till, like, two or three in the morning. Yeah. For sure. Um, but, yeah, that was our kind of, like, our first, like, toes in the water experience. And we were just, like, damn, there is, like, a desire yeah. for, like, our product within this competitive Smash community. And then, um, I don't know if it was the next week, or I don't know how much longer after that was um, Low Tier City. I don't remember. But, but it was it was still that same year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that entire first year was kind of like a whirlwind of, like, figuring out how to, like, get to more events in person, you know? Because that's where it kind of really took off. But right. And that's, that's kind of how like... we started. Yeah. That's kind of like my favorite thing about you guys. Whenever you guys are going to an event, you guys have like a little cool. I haven't, I, I will shamefully admit, I don't follow you guys on Instagram, but I know James tells me about it. He's always mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, I'm checking out their Instagram. It's really cool that like you guys have like a, necessarily like a world tour, but like a, you guys will drive to the location like sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. pretty, I think it's really sick. Like I'll see it on Twitter or James will tell me about it, right? For those of you guys who don't know, James is JMX, co-founder of 2GG, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, and, <laughs> and like, he tells me, like, oh, yeah, it's cool that you guys, like, do this. And sometimes, like, you guys will stop at a local and, like, you guys will, like, sell your, like, whatever extra wares you have. And then the local will be like, oh, that's sick. They're here. Like, that's mm-hmm. pretty cool that you guys do that. Um, but, yeah, go go on and tell me. So, you guys, so the, you guys did, like, a really, the crazy thing about that, too, is I remember my first Smash event. It was at high school. And we had the auditorium till. 11 and i got third at this event so this this is back when i played brawl i got third at this event so grand finals was about to happen and then that's when they started to kick us out so we couldn't Uh, yeah yeah and like we had like a crowd of at least 30 people so we had the crazy like i'm pretty sure everybody has already heard this a story like this before but like we literally grabbed what was a crt it was actually the crt from i think it was Mrs. Schultz class, what was her name? We grabbed this. We weren't supposed to grab it, but we took it with us to my friend's house, and we finished. Oh, we finished man. what would be grand yeah. finals there. So the next day when we like, come back to school, the school's wondering where the hell is this TV, <laughs> and then my friend had taken it. Didn't tell that's how it is. But yeah, so you yeah, guys, man. By the way, I feel like a bunch of people in the Smash community just have similar, like, kind of just low key ratchet stories. You know, and I feel like that energy is kind of, you know, it it's tied to, like, the Smash community. Everyone has a story like that, and everyone's come up from, like, nothing or struggle days or whatever. And so, yeah, that was just uh, our, our, our struggle rite of passage was <laughs> TGC6. <laughs> yeah. So uh, really, really quick, what 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 does Spiff what does Spiff mean? I know I know we talked about it a little, but what does it mean, and how did you guys come up with the name before we, uh, we go on? Uh, see, you love this um, well, because that that was all during that era. Because I don't even know if at the time of TGC mm-hmm. we had that name. Yeah, yet. I don't even know if we had a name picked up at that point. Before. We we spent at least half a year to a whole year just thinking of names because. We don't want to be pigeonholed into like being Smash Kids or the Smash Clothes people. Um, and at the time, this was still kind of during that shop era where I was having them, like, we're making art. And we were actually going to local shows and just showing off the art as well. So it wasn't even like we were bending or had apparel or had any kind of merch. We were still more or less just like a little art collective, hanging out with other art collectives in Houston. And um, the first name that we came up with, uh, because... Everyone growing up, not everyone, but a lot of people thought I was, like, Asian growing up, like, Vietnamese. I don't know why, like, passing. And everybody yeah. thought Alex was... Uh, I used to be a lot darker because I would, I would be outside all the time, and I get, like, <laughs> super dark. But that's, uh, that, that's fair because when I was growing up as a kid, I'm, I gained a lot of weight from high school, but a lot of people used to ask me, was I Filipino or was I Samoan? And I was like, I'm neither, <laughs> dude. I'm just Dominican. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I had a friend once that came up to me. I was like, hey, what'd you get for Chinese New Year? And I was like, you still have a gun. You know that I'm <laughs> um, But Alex was, everybody was like, Alex is Mexican. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> us being reflected then like that, uh, we went by the name of Ho Chin Garcia, where I was Ho Chin, he was Garcia. And... <laughs> That, that, we, we entered, we didn't enter any tournaments at that point. We, um, we had done one or two art shows mm. and seeing, for me, seeing that name with all the other like artist names, I was like, all right, we got to change it. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is cute, but I can't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know as those guys. Um, and then after that, uh, we just sat, we sat for a long time. It was like, okay, what do we, cause we didn't, mm-hmm. we didn't want to, we, we didn't want to be locked into something, you know? We're, this is going to be our name forever, you know? Uh, and so I was like, Lonely Arts Club. No. My favorite that just died was PSTK. Just pst. And it's just it's just a purely, like, sound-based name. He's like, yeah. how do you even look that up? Yeah. I was like, I don't care. I just like <laughs> So we cycled through a lot of different uh, things. Popped art. And then, yeah, gro- Grokked. Oh, Grok. I love Grok because it just means to... <laughs> suddenly understand everything that's what it means to grok something yeah but there's a type of pita chip called grok uh um, i think we knew for sure that we wanted something that was like oh short it was short it didn't have to necessarily be only four characters but mm. i think that we were kind of leaning towards something that was short visually like memorable um and then four letter words are the best yeah that's uh, true. and and then as far I, I the rest of it is kind of just like gone I remember it was one night late at night it was like two at, one or two in the morning at Whataburger. it was at Whataburger for sure i know the booth we were at i don't know why we were there 
I don't know if it was after an event or something. Yeah. But we were we were just sitting there and still just spitballing names. And uh there is um have you ever read Calvin and Hobbes? Yeah. Do you know of Calvin and Hobbes? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know Calvin's alter egos? Not off the not off the back of my name. I know what I know like he has like so many of them, but I don't remember them yeah. like back of my mind. And so one of them is his like intergalactic traveler one where he's always on a that's the one plane. that's the one I always kind of remember seeing. Yeah, yeah, and his name is Spaceman Spiff. And that was we I mean, back in like first, second grade, we had bonded over like comic books and and Calvin Hobbes was specifically one of them. Yeah. Uh, and Fox Trot, so. Yeah, I think when we were kids, like finding someone else who knew Calvin and Hobbes, because that's kind of an it's like a older comic. It was even like before our time. Yeah, mm-hmm. it wasn't really popular with like kids or people our age yeah so like finding someone else who already knew like what that was like i that's a distinct memory that i have yeah uh i think i remember being in the library and we were just reading those comics but that alter ego spaceman spiff uh like i just i love that word spiff and so i was like i wish we just had like a spiff face and they're like oh that's it write that down (laughs) yeah (laughs) um but like space studios we were thinking about words that could open us up to being other things as well mm. in case we wanted to branch out into other ideas or mediums um yeah and spiff uh has that origin where i mean you think spiff you think spiffy you think cool mm-hmm. you think keen you know there's nothing negative to it um it's a good time feeling kind of word and it doesn't have any other like meaning so i was like okay that's kind of fair game spiff mm-hmm. and it does harken back to that idea of like imagination and creativity and escape uh, of Spaceman Spiff, so we're like, okay, that's it. That's that, that's, that ties it all together. That's so perfect. Like I'm not gonna lie, yeah. it's that's like a really good <laughs> one. And you're right, like four. I, we lucked we lucked out a yeah. lot. Yeah, and you're right. Like four letter words or just short names are easy to remember than anything. Like mm. if you think about some of the more popular clothing brands like Vans, Gucci, the first thing that comes to my mind, Nike, they're all like short names. They're yeah, not. Yeah. I mean, unless you're Supreme, but that's like something else. And yeah, that's not that long. Yeah, yeah. it's not that long. But like, still, like, you know, Supreme if you're really into the, you know, the clothing, yeah. and that's still. Mm-hmm. So I tell people like, yeah, short names. I actually, I can definitely tell you guys right now. The I Radio came from the idea that I wanted to have this thing called Smash Radio, but I was like, I don't like the fact that it's. I don't want to be tied down to one Smash thing if I ever. You're do gonna one. be put into a box. Exactly. Yeah, and that's yeah. like the hardest thing about, and you guys are smart about it too, because you thought about it like almost day one at this point. Because I tell yeah. people the hardest thing that a lot of streamers, Smash streamers have, is they'll stream Smash with a huge viewership. I'm talking like Tweak, well, just an example. Tweak can get like 500, 800 viewers, right, when he's playing Smash. But then he goes to play Call of Duty and he's got like 50 viewers. Because, yeah. you know, he's in that box of just Smash. Because mm-hmm. he's already put himself in that. But if you start off yeah. as a variety streamer, you grow differently in that mm-hmm. sense. So I got the name DI Radio because one of my favorite commentators was actually Sajem. If you guys have ever watched Street Fighter commentary, any other mm-hmm. like at fighting game commentary, you guys probably heard of Sajem. So he started doing this uh, his own podcast called Jam Radio. So I was like, oh, Sajem, uh, <laughs> Jam Radio, cool. Yeah. I like Sajem. All right, so let's add the radio. Now I need a smash term, but not something that's going to constrict me in that. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, screw it, DI radio. I feel like that's the only thing that fits at the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it has a good ring to it. And it also is like, if, if it ha- even though it has its origins and a reference to something that exists mm-hmm. in Smash, mm-hmm. it's not something that's necessarily exclusive. To, because like someone coming across your podcast for the first time may assume that it stands for something else because it kind of sounds like diy or like whatever Mm -hmm. else you know so yeah it doesn't put you in that box and i think that that's really important but i think also helpfully i mean it is just like a very niche term used in smash so oh yeah it's not it's not evident and apparent at the very start like oh it's a smash streamer but but if you know you're like oh okay that's a cool cute little like way to tie it together um without being like very like in your face or superficial about it so honestly good job (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no. Good talk to you. you. You guys you guys definitely did it better than I did. Shoot. But, so yeah, let's go. You guys came up with the name Smith Space. When did you guys start seeing the growth and the transition to do other... I, part, part of my grammar, because I don't know how to word this. I'm trying to word this as best as possible. But 
decided to go like you guys said right you guys started doing anime clothing like I, I told I told Alex actually I haven't ordered that one yet because I'm in the middle of trying to lose weight so I want to wait to order clothes and lose weight so I'll come back to you for that design but the one that if you guys are seeing the sweater that Alex is wearing right now that's actually my favorite design right I think okay. what did you call it terrible truth or an ugly truth, ugly truth. Yeah. yeah yeah so that was yeah. my favorite design so I I like you guys started transition and then you guys had the the Akira design mm. soon you guys started transitioning when did you guys start f- feeling comfortable enough to start transitioning to those designs because i myself who like like i said i bought a lot of clothes from different artists and other like i wouldn't necessarily i don't know i'm not the perfect person to ask this or like make the statement but like so to say streetwear because like there's other ones like i'm just going to give examples i'm not trying to make any comparisons for anybody who like mm-hmm. in the comments uh there's things people like four eyes clothing there's a party art there's night runner one of my favorite ones is um marble soda uh yeah. and then you know so when did you guys start making that transition and just feeling comfortable to do that and i know coincidentally most of those brands if i'm not mistaken especially they're like mm-hmm. from texas too i think some of them not all of them uh, i think some of them are, i think yeah. Harry might um a lot of them are from la yeah okay. like I, I, I don't know like i don't know a lot of the are. a lot of the big ones are based in socal okay yeah. uh but there are yeah a uh, surprising number that are from texas it's cool it's just cheaper to live i guess yeah <laughs> you're traveling anyway so yes yeah, sure. um i actually don't know if we had reached a certain level of like comfortability before making our anime pieces because we kind of just jumped into it but i think that was kind of a necessary next step yeah. that we thought was going to be good because yeah we vend at a lot of like smash events but smash ultimately has exists within its own kind of bubble right and there's like a finite amount of people who really know or are interested in the smash competitive scene at least the way that it is now um so for us it just made sense as we were expanding to kind of go into you know what's a kind of similar audience that we can reach out to but has a wider scope right and we were already going to like live events we were going to conventions gaming conventions gaming events so the next logical step was to go to anime conventions but we could we weren't comfortable going to anime conventions and only selling like esports or smash as like related merch we wanted to have something that we could offer to people who go to anime conventions as well so i think that was kind of the thought process behind it i think what was our first anime event was the second winner yeah i think so and that that they didn't go great but yeah. it had to go that way for us to know what what do people like? What do you want? Will our stuff even transition this way? Um, or do we have to kind of like fine tune everything uh, to a different audience? But I mean, it, it is. I, I think what works so well about about Smash and why we're able to adapt to it is because Nintendo has so many like properties and there's so much to play with within that whole realm. Mm-hmm. And they're all like classic characters, so anybody knows who Mario is or Luigi. Um, I mean, Sonic, Link, Samus, all that. And with anime, there is also so many just, like, properties and characters that you can, like, pay homage to and, and play with. And even if it's, you're not explicit about it, there's still enough of a culture and scene behind almost every anime and fandom that you'll attract somebody, you know? You'll be like, oh, that's the exact same color scheme as movie. Okay, that's, oh, I see what he's doing here. Okay, I, I want to mess with that. <laughs> um, and I, I think that's, that helps, but we definitely had to start by knowing how we weren't there at all. Yeah. Yeah, the first couple of anime events were a struggle. So, like I said, I don't think it was that we were necessarily super comfortable with, like, transitioning over. But we knew that it had to happen, so we kind of just jumped in, you know. So, but, I mean, it's been cool. There's a lot of uh, stuff to play with uh, in anime and even just, like, the anime art style in and of itself. Um, it's really appealing to us as well. So, it was it was kind of just, like, the logical next step. Right, for right, sure. right. God, there was like a question in my brain, and all of a sudden it like completely <laughs> disappeared from listening to you guys. Um, but yeah, I think that's what's really cool about, like you said, the anime art style. You can, 
Smash and anime kind of go hand in hand in a funny way. That's just how things are. I actually, yeah. a, a lot of, I actually, a lot of games in anime go hand in hand. I used to just tell people, like, what's Valorant? I was like, oh, well, if CSGO had an anime, that probably would be Valorant right there. Yeah. Right? Oh, what's oh, what's Overwatch? Imagine if there was an anime, but you put that with Team Fortress 2. There you go. Mm. You know, th- those... Those things, you know, kind of fit together really, really nicely. Yeah, but. and that's a that's a good point that you made. Like, for some reason or another, it seems that a lot of the Smash community is also, like, there's a lot of overlap within, like, having interest in anime. So we knew that because we had an audience that was predominantly Smash, if we transitioned over, like, we could ha- potentially bring a lot of those customers with us, you know, mm. into whatever anime stuff that we ended up making. So, yeah, that's a good point that you brought up. Yeah, what I guess so to speak. What kind of goes into the thought process of I guess moving away from like origins a little bit here. What kind of goes into the thought process of coming up with a design? And I mean, I've never. I'm not an artist. I've only drawn like when I have to, you know, in my cases. So I'm never comfortable with how I draw. But for you, for you guys specifically, what kind of goes into a thought process, into a design, into where you feel comfortable enough for it to sell especially when it comes to some smash stuff because like i said some of the, the first few designs that came out i remember was like um i can't i'm i'm not i'm really bad at the memory of like how what they were titled but they were basically like nba team shirts with smash right. characters you know or like i think it was like the something war, like the noir warriors or something like that and it yeah. Was, yeah so what what uh-huh. kind of like goes into that thought process of not only just making smash designs but also those anime designs um, I would say at least with the Smash ones, there is like a like a playfulness between two different, I would say, fandoms. Where like sports and Smash aren't usually gonna align and, and overlap, mm-hmm. but but if you because of that, because they they don't look similar to each other, um, when they when both pieces kind of click together, it's sort of like a little puzzle you figure out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that. At the time that most of those shirts were designed, um, no one was really making apparel for Smash. Um, And definitely no one was coupling Smash with, uh, like, a different type of aesthetic, Mm -hmm. right? Um, So at the time, pairing them with, like, NBA teams, even if you didn't watch, like, the NBA those, some of those logos are so recognizable, yeah. like universally recognizable, that whenever someone would come across whatever we made, they would think that it was whatever NBA team that it was, and then they look at it for like two or three more seconds and they realize, oh, that's Falco, or oh, that's Link, or whatever. And I think it's that, that moment whenever it clicks is kind of what makes it memorable to people who looked at it um, at that time even now, I guess, but, like, especially at that time, whenever there wasn't a lot of, like, Smash apparel, aside from, like, Link straight up, like, on a shirt, or, like, a Triforce on a shirt, or whatever, and so it was just something, like, super different and super memorable, and I think that's what we kind of wanted to aim for in the beginning, especially, um, was to come out the gates with something that was, like, kind of clicked like that, and, yeah, now we're at a point where we can make more subtle designs, and that's fine, but like at the beginning, yeah, it was kind of like an aha moment for people whenever they looked at our designs and they kind of connected with it that way. It was just it was just the blending of uh, different parts of the world into one, uh, and it's just like why would this be together? Okay, all right, okay. I'm yeah, it. we kind of like wanted to to bridge this gap between like you can take something that's like Smash or nintendo or whatever and not just have it be a a plain image of that and you can kind of tie it into something that's more related to pop culture or something you wouldn't think to like mesh it with and Mm -hmm. that yeah that was the thought process behind that pretty 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 dope how do you guys i I know i i'm not wearing them because i actually i'm actually washing clothes today (laughs) but time of this recording really interesting how i talk about life events here but Mm -hmm. um some of my favorite designs. I never got the green one. I got the I got the yellow one, which I got it last year at Evo. Um, some of the designs that I really really liked too were like when you guys started coming out with the. I think it might have been. God, it was it Anime Expo. I want to say was it, I don't, there must have been some kind of saga in the middle of Anime Expo where you guys released the Sailor like so to speak like the Sailor Moon one. Yeah, yeah. 
designs, uh-huh. and then you guys later on released the other ones that were more based on like Naruto. I think it was Hyrule Saga. Hyrule, Hyrule Saga. Saga. Okay, yeah. it must have been Hyrule Saga. And then yeah. you guys released like the probably I think the Naruto ones last year mm-hmm. uh, earlier, and then you guys had like some Persona ideas ones as well. I thought mm-hmm. those were really really sick. Um, thank you. No, no, you won't. You, did you say thank you? Sorry. I, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those those are really sick. Um, yeah, I I almost feel like I have like the show wrapped up. We're like fifty four minutes into like recording for Dang. everybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> we've been talking for a minute. I I think, like you said, I think the beauty of the apparel is like things that people can relate to, that make them go, oh, aha, I like this. I'm into sports. Cool. I'm into Mario. This fits two bills. There's my dollar. There's my there's my money sold. Right. Yeah. I, I also think the coolest thing that you guys do, and maybe you guys talk a little bit about that, was one of my favorite things about the more re- the recent Pokemon game that released was Sword, Sword and Shield was I like the fact that every time I played the game and I went to an area, there were new clothes that I could buy in the shop. So I'm like, oh, it's sick. That kind of gave me more. Oh, that almost fit, like triggered the inner like fashion fashionista in me, I guess. Where I was like, cool, yeah. I really want to get to the next area so I can buy this cool-looking shirt and then try to mix and match it with my character. So I always yeah. tell people the coolest thing about going about Smith Space and then going to an event almost, it's like you guys have like this really cool roadmap of like, hey, there's this specific new shirt drop at this saga. And then it'll sell out because everybody wants that shirt. And then yeah. go to SmashCon, hey, there's this specific drop of this jacket yeah. and it sells out because mm-hmm. everybody, you know... That's the coolest thing I've always found about you guys. Of like, I don't know if you guys do it intentional or not, but like that roadmap of like, oh, cool. If you do travel around to different Smash tournaments, there's always mm-hmm. something new that Space brings to the table. Yeah, we do try to time most of our drops with new events, and because there's been no events this year, mm-hmm. it's you know been kind of difficult to uh, to still kind of get over that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know how how intentionally roadmap that is though. Yeah, I think. Um... For us, a lot of times, like, it, it'll it coincidentally coincide with something where this is going to be the first event where we drop this thing. And we typically try and do it to where we take, like, half of a new product to whatever events we're going to, and then we'll leave half for whenever we sell it online, just so that most people have a, at least a chance of getting it. Nice. Um, but, yeah, I think that overall, a lot of brands try and find one thing and then they just try and like replicate it over and over and for us i think that we just have so many varied interests that we're constantly trying to design new products and i think in a way that unintentionally or semi-intentionally ties in with like the exclusivity of each design Mm -hmm. because on the one hand it is kind of exclusive on the other hand it's kind of like well after we've we have gone through one set of our inventory we're kind of over it and we kind of want to move on to the next thing so it's yeah. kind of it kind of plays to both of those different ideas i thought the coolest thing too was like definitely giving you guys a lot of kudos but <laughs> the coolest thing too was what i like to call the commentator's jacket back in the championship saga days we're like only i asked some people like dude this is how you know you've made it you get a really sick space jacket that like nobody else has and like yeah, it was. I thought that was the coolest thing. I think you told me when we when we talked about it like a year ago. You told me those are the first designs, and then you later on revised the design, and then mm. we got some of the jackets today. So I thought that was yeah. really cool. Is like that sort of like quote unquote exclusive merch, so to speak, of like at the time at least, because I remember yeah. only the commentators had that jacket, right? I would I would go on stream. Only Strides had that jacket. Only TK had that jacket, right? Yeah, it was kind of interesting. I feel like for for a hot second. Actually, even even today, like commentators are kind of they get so much screen time mm-hmm. uh, during Smash streams because they'll cut to the commentators all the time, and like commentators are kind of like the alpha testers of a lot of our, yeah. our products. How's it going? Uh, how's it going to look? Uh, how are people going to react to it? Et cetera, et cetera. But also in a way that's not like, oh, here's like we're uh, we're not throwing ads in your, you know, mm-hmm. um, so. Yeah, we, we do have, I think, a pretty healthy relationship with commentators. Oh, yeah. And yeah, maybe it is unfair they get a little bit of... <laughs> no, which, uh, like, <laughs> in, in, but like, hey, that's why you're a commentator, right? Yeah, no, that's why I tell people, <laughs> sometimes being a commentator is, it's 
it's one of two things, if I can definitely tell anybody like my experience. It's sometimes a thankful job or it is a thankless job. It's and it depends on how you choose to take it. For me in my case, it in my experience, I don't want to like explain anybody's experience. It's a lot of thankless job from the larger community, but it is a more thankful job towards where I live in SoCal specifically. I just tell people at this point, I, I do it because it's a passion and I love it, but also I enjoy being a part of it. Like I enjoy like for those for those of you guys that don't know me, like me and James are always hanging out like at the entrance mm-hmm. where people come into the yeah. sagas. And yeah. then you I know you guys in the back and then we're all like interchangeably messing around because that's how you know it is. That's the fun part about it. That's what I that's what I tell people that's why I enjoy it. It's not that I don't enjoy commentary. I enjoy commentary, but that whole like getting to see everybody again, getting to talk, you know, those little conversations, those little things that happen. Uh, like when when I saw somebody make their fight stick out of just stickers that you that you guys were selling, I thought that was yeah. the sickest thing ever. You know, I get to see that behind the scenes. Yeah. Or the fact that like uh, Genesis this year, my friend, she had a booth right next to yours, and then like here comes Papa Spiff with all this cool food, and she's like, oh, Spiff, <laughs> Spiff bottles like everything. You know. Oh, we got all that chicken. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, we got all the chicken. I'm frozen. I think. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You froze. I'll bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck in a funny post. Hold on. Let me let me let me exit and I'll come back and see if that changes anything for you guys. All right. Hopefully, hopefully we're coming back. Uh, yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. All right. Sick. <laughs> that's that's the beauty about Discord calls and Zoom calls in 2020. We all gotta mm-hmm. do them. So yeah, that's kind of like the that was uh, that was my friend told me she's like oh Spiff bought us all food so uh, like felt special. Yeah. Man, I miss events so much. <laughs> yeah, I try not to think about it because I'll just get sad. But I know that you know they'll be back in twenty twenty two. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which 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 leads me to to my next question, right? Like how how has given a lot of like recent events and like allegations. Like, we already and that's obviously the elephant in the room. I froze again, but. Mm-hmm. That's the elephant yeah. in the room. Given a lot of recent yeah. events and allegations, how have you guys treated the online space in terms of sales for you guys? I'm going to go ahead and leave and come back because I think... Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's see if that fixes anything. I don't believe we've navigated that. Um, okay. Yeah, well, how, yeah, how have you guys... So let me, let me go ahead and just quickly because okay. I'll probably fix that in post. Um, how, yeah, how have you guys been able to take this online space, especially not, like I said, right, the beautiful thing about Space Space was, like, that, so to speak, that roadmap, right? Like, you go to the event, cool, there's a new Spiff drop every event. And if you didn't, weren't able to go, cool, there's still something for you online. But now that everything is just all online, we're not, you know, physically interacting with each other. How have you guys been able to take the, a lot that, you know, the changing worlds, so to speak? Mm-hmm. I mean, I would say we haven't entirely. Uh, we have plans um, sort of in fruition. It's been difficult, at least for me, because it seems like a time to not make things about us. Like, there's so much else going on in the world and mm. so much uncertainty. And it's it's a matter of, like, it would be terrible to do a huge release, like, at least right now or earlier, when people are kind of like, hey, am I going to make rent this month, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There were a lot of things that happened in Rapid Succession where we were, like, uncomfortable asking our fan base for money. Because then if they don't, then they miss out on exclusivity, and it's just like, oh, we'll never get it again. So, like, right whenever COVID happened, we didn't want to release something because, you know, like, we don't want to have to put somebody in a position where, like, they got to miss out on something or they're going to, even worse, like, buy something from us and then not be able to make rent. And so that was kind of like a, okay, let's kind of take a back seat for a little yeah. bit. And then all the Black Lives Matter, like, protests were, like, really, 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 like, and it was heavy. Like, and we didn't want to take away from that social conversation by, like, hey, buy our stuff, you yeah, know? Yeah, I didn't want to say anything. It's like, look, this, we are nowhere near the top of your list right now. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, you yeah, should yeah. focus on the world right now. Um, and I, I think that's also tied into yeah. just how we handle this year. Um, and the, lack of and, and the same with like uh, all the allegations in the Smash community as well. Once all of that was happening, you know, we also didn't want to take away from 
those voices or that conversation that was being had. So we kind of also took a back seat right. there too. Sure. But it's been it's been fine. I think overall, um, we have more productive years when we're able to travel. Obviously, but us taking a back seat and kind of like reevaluate it, it gave us time to reevaluate and figure out a lot of different things on our end. Um, and I think that we're going to be stronger for it because we're going to have a better way of like, you know, uh, presenting social media. We've been working on like content and a lot of stuff, like more behind the scenes that we never had time to sit down and figure out before it's always traveling. is stuff that we're doing now. And I think ultimately it's going to be more productive whenever we're I able would, to come back. And- I would say that just looking at like our engagement with people, um, we haven't done as well this year because there's been no events and there's right. been less March. But there's still plenty of people that want it. Like, there's still, like, a hunger for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's still pretty evident. Um, just at least, like, with this latest drop and and throughout the years before. Uh, that I, I don't feel like people's interest in us has waned. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's fine. Like, hey, we can just take a back seat and when we come back, like, we'll all get to party and celebrate again. Yeah. Um, and like I think that space is still there and open for us, uh, just for when we're ready to step back into it. Have you guys? This is something that I've seen. Like I, I know I know there was a lot of like for the record. I know there were like a lot of things that happened in terms of allegations and situations. I'm not excusing for what he did or what he said. I just want to go ahead and state that before comments go off or someone comes at me with an angry tweet. Hot take. Hot yeah, take. A, a hot taker. Yeah, but the one thing that I do appreciate about one specific uh, is actually something that I wanted to talk to you about. My good friend, Moonshine Charms, Naomi is that's her name. I wanted to tell her, like, maybe she should stream her process. Is I know Nez, he streams his process of, like, you know, fixing controllers, getting controllers, going through designs and stuff. Like that. Have you guys ever thought of doing something like that to, like, kind of give a little bit more spiff space in people's lives, so to speak? Because I do I, – I, the funny thing about this year at Genesis was, like, my friend told me um, she liked my stories at Genesis because – she got to see a lot of cool, like, behind-the-scenes stuff. So she got to see you, you know, go ahead and make a shirt, make a sweater, yeah. and all that stuff. Have you guys ever thought of, like, you know, having, like, a weekly or some kind of stream to, like, you know, when you guys are going through the process of it, basically? Okay. Uh, but I know so, that would spoil a lot, too, as well. Well, I, I would say this. Um, at least our Instagram has been very quiet because the stories used to always be us on the road and mm-hmm. content, content, content. Now it's like, do you want to see me and my dog all day, like just chilling? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's very tough to like not have very much to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think also because of like not having any drops or events, um, it, it's also been like we're we're keeping quiet, we're keeping ourselves. Uh, yeah. But I would say that has definitely crossed our minds because uh, there's a lot of people. Like we have a lot of friends now that are like getting on Twitch, and like they might as well. It's like, hey, I'm home all day. I'm playing games. Let me just stream it, um, and that would be where uh, I've tried to put some interest in and focus is like, how do we even, how do, how do we even live stream a thing? How do we even like do yeah. an event? Um, I can say that at this moment in time, we at least have an idea for one stream. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have any other details other than that, but we, okay. I think it's going to be cool. Yeah. I think it's going to be cool. That, that's, so. that's where a lot of our uh, background processes have been. Yeah. So, um, so you can, you can, 80% expect one, at least one stream <laughs> yeah. from us this year. And then once we get one down, it'll be easier yeah. for all of 2021 and 2022. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, I guess, I mean, we got, a, we got a pretty good show, honestly. A lot of great questions were asked. I, I hope I had a really good time kind of reconnecting with you guys because I haven't been able to see you guys in, like, what, what eight months now? Because, yeah, last time we saw you guys. Yeah, too long, man. Yeah, yeah Genesis yeah. 7. Um, I guess I don't have any community questions, and I wish I did, but I do have, like, some that I feel, like, I think the community would ask. Oh, for sure. When, I guess, uh, so to speak, too, in this case, and maybe you guys can answer uh, a frequently asked question, but have you guys, what are, I mean, I know that things have changed, and I know you guys removed some recent clothing line because of the allegations, right, out of respect for those that that happen. Are there some collaborations with artists or esports organizations or just commentators? I know you guys have the TK Breezy uh, dad hat was one of them that came out that was really, really good. But have you guys yeah. had, like, I know I, re- I talked to you a little bit, of, like, a long time ago. It was, like, a Kai Riot, like, a collaboration between you and that artist. 
Are there any other collaborations you guys have taken into consideration or we're, are looking forward to probably doing in the future? Or, or? Um, I mean, that's an interesting question. I think that we are always open to the idea of collaboration. Mm -hmm. I think the way that we approach collabs is that it's, it's a very organic process and we don't like to rush anything. Yeah. So we have had like, we've been in talks with like collaborating with a, a bunch of different people for, for a long time now. And um, I think that when they're ready, they'll happen. Yeah. A lot of the collaborations that we want to do have to deal with other artists in the Smash community as opposed to like players or figureheads or whatever. Mm. Um, so I would say you can look forward to that. Uh, I don't know when they'll happen, but yeah. there's still, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we definitely are still open to collaborating with other people, predominantly uh, artists, I think, at this point. Yeah, I say it's tough. Like, you can't just give us a deadline and expect us to. We just don't function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, I think what's really cool too. I like probably. Or I think I said it already, but I'll just. If I probably forgot, I guess I'll say it again. The cool thing is, I've always felt Spiff's drops were always collaborative in their own way. When Persona Five was getting really popular, you guys like launched the shirt and the dress, right? When talks of Sora being possibly in Smash. You guys constantly mm. like launched like you know the clothing line, so I always felt like yeah. you guys have always like threw a dart on the board, and it was like right there. I was like, oh, perfect. The community's talking about Sora and Smash. Cool. Here's a clothing line. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, I yeah, it does kind of dictate because we honestly have so many ideas, and the challenge is oftentimes deciding which of those ideas to pursue. So. Yeah, keeping your thumb on the pulse of like what people are talking about and what's kind of getting traction does play into like that decision making. It doesn't necessarily inform. It's not like, oh, dang, this thing's really hot right now. I got to try and come up with something for it. It's more like if we already had an idea for something yeah. and it so happens to be getting talked about, then that probably informs our decision making. Like, OK, let's let's see where this goes, you know, this thought process goes. And so, yeah, I think that is um, something that's really important is is knowing our audience and knowing what they're currently into. Yeah, I, I think it definitely, there is always the idea of, like, like how much interest in, is there, I like, in this moment, like, for this property, mm -hmm. this kind of idea. Um, but I don't know, it's very fluid. It's it's not that we, like, again, have a, a roadmap of, like, all right, these are things we're dropping here and then. Mm. It's kind of just like, all right, this kind of works. This this seems to be getting traction. We have some we can yeah. play with. Yeah. Uh, we'll just focus on that one. Yeah. Prioritize that one. And I guess, now, now I kind of remember a little bit. And I guess my next question to kind of both of you guys is, and you say how you guys want it. It's okay. Who is the mastermind behind the designs, right? I, to me, it's Alex, but I don't know if it could be you, Oz. <laughs> who who kind of like and have you guys like thrown around designs? I don't want to like cause any like weird like no. who's uh, Ringo was, and who's you know who's uh who's no, so and so. Sure it's, it's not like Alex that like steers the ship. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I've just kind of been there always like since the beginning, and we definitely always have to talk about every design and event. And, yeah, like how are we gonna approach it? How are we gonna do it? Um, his ability to design is just a lot more like at it than mine is. Mm -hmm. So I do more of the like product shots. I do a lot of the more like bureaucratic behind the scenes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and Alex just was like, all right, here's, here's what we're working on. Here's what we're doing next. Okay. And, and I will say, because Oz is an excellent designer, yes. so it kind of <laughs> sucks that like none of y'all will really be able to see like 90% of the stuff he makes. Oh, yeah. Um, Has he made but, anything that's gone in the store? Yes. Um, yeah. So you remember the the ghosts the shirt with all the ghosts on it the little boot oh, and all okay. that okay yeah 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 all the ghost stuff is mine. all the ghost stuff is is 100% him and he is an amazing designer he just like i think has a problem oh, yeah. finishing his finishing his concept i'm incredibly like self critical yeah and, and that's I, that's the biggest thing and it's cool it's like um I agree you shouldn't ever rush a design yeah. or anything. So if you're not satisfied with it, then that's that's totally cool. And uh, that space is open for, like, he can release as many designs as he wants. It is, it but... is true. It's just, and I'll, I'll be very honest, it's always very difficult because Alex is the one that, when we first started, 
was the spearhead of all the designs. And yeah. then afterwards, trying to not compete, but be in that same spotlight, it's like, damn, I know Alex has got it. Like, I don't got to say a thing. It's going to be fine either way. So, <laughs> uh, I, it, it really takes pressure off me to have to perform and compete. But mm -hmm. when I know that Alex has it, you know? Yeah. But for the majority of the designs that people have seen, it, it has been you who has designed and drawn them. So... Is but, there a design? You know, in the future, that'll probably change. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. I, I, I was going to say, like, I think in my in my eyes, just how I see it, <laughs> because, anime, like, you guys, we talk about anime and, like, how it fits into everything. I thought the Boo design was a really smart and unique one just because it's kind of, like, it sounds weird, and I, that's why I probably like it a lot, is because it does remind me of the anime girl faces that, you know, you uh -huh. usually see in animes, but this time they're yeah. all boos. And this oh, yeah. is... This is a way, like, I'm not trying to judge anybody how you live your life. You live your life how you want. But uh -huh. I'm very, I've been a very weird advocate of, I'm not a big fan of the, like, the whole Ahegao thing. I was, like, very uh, much, like, yeah. on the fence of, like, eh, this is not, this is right. not, this is not my thing. But I like the Boo designs because they were much, for, for lack of a better term, I apologize for my grammar or finding a better, they were much safer. And they're actually a, still yeah. a sick and unique design. I right. definitely, like, strive for cute. Where yeah, I know yeah. It's all, like cool, mm. uh, <laughs> and you know, trying to be cute in 2020 is very difficult. <laughs> yeah, uh, so sometimes we need to yeah, be cute. I would say with, with like the booze and most of my other designs, um, it it is always striving to be like uh, I wouldn't say wholesome, but I did look at like a lot of anime faces, and I just looked at the original boo designs from Mario World, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's where I took it. I just looked at the sprites and I just stared at them and just redrew them like a hundred times. And then collated like my favorite top 15, 20 bodies and then eyes and then mouse and stitched it all slowly together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. the other thing that people will probably not know is that for like the vast majority of if you buy something from us online, anything that's designed like little package inserts or like the box that it comes in yeah. or like the packaging that it comes in, that's all him. That's all. Like he designs <laughs> all that stuff. So it's like a lot of the stuff that like you don't really like think about yeah. but adds value to like the brand as a whole like has been him and he's designed all this stuff like a lot of the images you see on the website has been him yeah. so like, I, yeah I, I, so it's it's definitely not just me no it's, no no uh, yeah, shout out to you us because yeah that's that's super important i mean if you look at the way like like apple and their iphones right the number one thing that's pretty important on the iphone is the packaging right it's yeah. got that super unique box design that even to like the opening an iphone is an experience itself yeah so i have a bad bad experience yeah. yeah so i'm glad i'm glad you think about like that design oz because that's super important that's actually one of my like i've never been into clothing drops but i remember when a friend of mine went for like a specific drop from supreme mm -hmm. They packaged it and they the first two the first one they sent it to him was really bad. I was like, dude, it's like you're buying a shirt. You, except you had yeah. me wake up at four in the morning to make sure I can click refresh. Yeah. yeah. But one thing that they've done later on is they've changed the shipping designs. And when he got the package, it was like this whole experience of like, oh, dude, I'm getting a really sick to shirt. But also the packaging design is important as well. So I'm glad you thought about that, Alice. Yeah. yeah. And I think honestly, being at the booth is. Uh, where I really shine. That's like the most vivid experience you can get. Uh, <laughs> and I definitely play a large part uh, there. But I mean, when you see all the clothing and everything else like that, it's just, that's the front and center of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess my final question before we close out and end and the show, because I've had a great time here. Um, what's what's your guys' favorite part about running Swift Space? To, to, to both of you guys, basically. What, travel? Yeah, engagement? Uh, honestly, do you want to go? Do you got an idea? I'm thinking. I mean, I I love like seeing people. I'm I'm very much an introvert, but when I'm on the road, it's all a show. I'm a major extrovert, and I love just like seeing, not even like friends, but just like complete newbies, just strangers, and making mm -hmm. friends with it, and making engagement and memories. Um, I like being at the shop where I'm at because it's always memory, and I get to be a very like big part of like their shopping experience and it's a thousand times that with it because and you'll catch glimpses of it in the stories mm -hmm. we get to live such a, a unique well lucky life where like like i love driving so i get to drive and show you the wild west as often as i get to see it and i get to tell people about like all these little weird stops we see in tucson and new mexico uh <laughs> and just like getting to share that story and like kind of share the magic and 
joy that I get from living and traveling. Like, mm -hmm. that's, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, along a similar thread, I feel like we're really, really blessed to be able to, to live the life that we do. You know, we get to travel. We get to see a lot of new places all the time. We get to see a lot of people all the time. And I think that, you know, us having a place within a community and having a fan base that resonates with us um, is really special. Um, it, it's cool seeing somebody connect with, like, a design or whatever, or them telling us stories of how, like, oh, um, I was wearing my Spiff hoodie at Walmart and somebody stopped me and we started talking about, like, Smash and stuff. Like, that's, that's cool. I love hearing all of that stuff, all those cool stories. Um, and it's because, like, us and a lot of people have like similar interests and that's like a way that we all stay connected and i think that's that's really cool to me yeah even without interest like seeing moms and dads that go to events they're just like what the hell is going on like oh, yeah. hold up let me tell you okay yeah. you see that guy it, he's got plot armors so everyone's watching him yeah <laughs> and it's it's fun being able to like like share this very small view of the world with everybody mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah I that's, think that's, that's what makes good. your guys' booth really unique, too. I, it's, it's like, I've, here in SoCal, if you guys have obviously been to the events, the booth is like the centerpiece of all the booths, which is pretty sick. The more when you walk in, you see it. But also the cool part is, like, you know when you go to Evo or you go to CEO or any of those events, right? You buy the shirt of the event. And I've already said it, like, twice already, but I'll just go ahead and I'll say it. For the final time, whenever you guys do, do go to an event, it's like specifically how i've seen it and how i felt it is like at 2gg events it's like the shirt is the drop of the event so to speak when you guys launched the i don't think james was there when it happened but when you guys launched the the castlevania spiff shirt shirt i remember buy, buying that and i was like oh it's like this is the shirt of the event and yeah. it was really sick about that yeah i think yeah just making that memory with a bunch of different people is like really special yeah so guys it's been a great time I, it's, it's been awesome interviewing yeah catch, catching up and hearing the story of space um yeah man thanks for having us no i'm glad wow. to have you guys on i'm not fun you guys are probably wondering you guys your guys is uh so to speak hype train will launch uh -huh. this week because the way that I record shows is very different. Sometimes I record somebody like two weeks ago, but their episode isn't out until like a yeah, month yeah. later. So yeah. you guys are actually episode seven, actually. So yeah, you guys will definitely, okay. if you guys are, number. yeah, that's my number. <laughs> so cool. if, you, if you guys are not, if you guys are tuning in, yeah, this episode of course is being recorded and shown as soon as possible. So if you guys are wondering, how do you guys know when the next episode launches definitely tune into msm online during the break i will definitely show out the next episode and the clip of it and yeah it'll play um be watching i'm gonna be watching <laughs> yeah it'll, it'll be playing it'll be playing for sure this monday and then the following clip i'll tease later on um but for any uh before we go where where can people find you guys uh on instagram at spiff space on twitter at spiff space uh, Spiff dot space. We got domain rights too. Mm -hmm. um, where else can they find us? Technically, we have a Patreon, but we don't use it yet. We have a Facebook. Yeah, I would say Instagram and Twitter are the best ways to reach us um, at Spiff Space uh, with one F, where? Um, uh, or just on our website at yeah. SpiffSpace.com. Yep, the easiest. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna go ahead. We can talk a little bit post post show. And all that yeah. stuff. Uh, but until then, guys, this has been DI Radio episode number seven. I am Vance. These two gentlemen are Alex and Oz. Uh, do you guys do you guys have anything to say before we go? Before we go? I think that's it. You covered it. You did a great job. Man. Yeah. Thank uh, you. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. How do you <laughs> beautiful listeners? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I was also a little like quick parentheses here. I'm sorry I haven't been able to, but yes, you guys will be able to get the show on spotify and you guys will be able to get it on soundcloud i am working on that i just want to get with audio changes to some of the previous episodes 
because I know there's a lot of issues with that. So I apologize for that. I want to say you guys will be able to get those. But until next time, guys, it has been my pleasure to serve you. Be kind. Stay safe. Remember to wear a mask. Go vote because that's, that's, that's coming up. And also, don't go broke over buying an Xbox or PS5. Make sure you can pay your rent. Those are those, very important. <laughs> Try, so, so, and if you guys need a face mask, uh, I'll, 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 I'll let you guys plug that in. I know you guys have your recent merch launch, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we just launched it on this past Thursday, and uh, it's been it's been popping. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you need a face mask, uh, stop by our online store, spacespace dot com. Mm-hmm. We have a bunch. Yeah, yeah I definitely. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. I bought the the face mask just plain because I just love yeah. the color of it, and I also bought a pin because I I have a cork board like right there. Yeah, I'm funny, right? Yeah, I see it. So I like collecting pins. Board. <laughs> so yeah until next time guys it's been my pleasure to serve you stay safe wear a mask though uh, go ahead and vote please be kind to one to each other respect one another and until this until then this has been di radio bye-bye take care